each other since 1899, but few of their meetings have been as important as tonight's. They're fighting for the right to play for college baseball's national championship. While Clemson has had a relatively smooth ride to a 2-0 start here in Omaha, South Carolina needed to reach into the bag of Rosenblatt magic to stave off elimination and pull off a comeback for the ages. So South Carolina is down perhaps its final out of the season. They have the man they would want up there. 3-2 pitch. Base hit in the right field. And he scores the tie. I'm saving this summer. Up the middle, base hit. They're going to wave Bradley around. Here he comes to the plate. And South Carolina wins. And they're still alive. I'm saving this ESPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One for the 291st time all time it's South Carolina and Clemson two schools just a little more than two hours apart meeting tonight in Omaha Nebraska Clemson still with the upper hand in bracket two it's double elimination play within the brackets and Clemson is Undefeated, South Carolina with one loss. They narrowly avoided elimination last night against Oklahoma. They now have to beat Clemson twice in a row to move on to the national championship finals. TCU set up a winner-take-all game in bracket one tomorrow with their victory today over UCLA. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Robin Ventura. Delighted to have you with us. We'll be joined by Aaron Andrews in just a moment. It's hard to imagine a more pulsating victory for South Carolina than the one the Gamecocks experienced last night. Down to their final strike of the season, they rally to win it and beat Oklahoma, sending the Sooners home. But they have to regroup very quickly. They're still facing elimination, and they're taking on their arch rivals. Well, that's the thing. is Late last night, they were on the brink of elimination. They battle back. Their last at bat. They finally come up. Brady Thomas comes up, hits a base hit up the middle, scores... Scores a runner from second base. They come all the way back, and the emotion is just incredible to be able to carry that back into the next night, especially against a big team and a rival like Clemson. It's a South Carolina team that has been leaning on pitching and defense all season long. Meanwhile, Clemson has overcome at times shaky pitching and fielding, and they've been relying most heavily on their hitting. They have 20 hits in their two wins here, but amazingly, 19 of the 20 hits are singles. They'd like a little more pop. They haven't needed it so far. They would like a little more pop, but they will take the singles. Everybody's hitting in the lineup, and that's the key. Keep everybody moving around the bases. You don't always have to rely on the big three-run homer. Go ahead and hit your singles, keep guys coming in, play some defense, and you can win this game. Coach Ray Tanner of South Carolina says this is the greatest rivalry in college baseball. Tonight they play with so much at stake. South Carolina and Clemson in a moment. The NCAA College World. Well, the heat and humidity have returned to Omaha, Nebraska today and tonight as we approach the first pitch. It's 88 degrees, and with the heat index, it's 101 with the high humidity. Very hot in Rosenblatt Stadium, and particularly on the field surface. This is a great rivalry in all sports. They're at times bitter rivals. Columbia to Clemson, about 132 miles. Can drive in in about two hours and 15 minutes, according to Coach Ray Tanner. The rivalry particularly spirited in football. There's been some ugliness over the years and some great games. On the diamond, Clemson leads all time. They met three times during this regular season. Clemson won two out of three. But a very similar situation existed back in 2002 when Clemson was 2-0. South Carolina beat them twice. The Gamecocks went on to the championship game. Back then it was just one game winner take all. Texas defeated South Carolina. Ray Tanner used that history lesson with his team, reminded them it can be done. Here's Aaron Andrews. 
Sean, thanks. You know, it's funny when you ask players, coaches, and fans of the Gamecocks or of the Tigers just how intense is their rivalry, this rivalry, they all kind of get this smirk on their face and they start laughing at each other. I've been hearing things like there's bad blood between these two programs. You know, this is for the bragging rights of the state. There's pride on the line tonight. And as we were told in our meetings today, this could be the most intense rivalry in college baseball. But as Tigers outfielder and quarterback Kyle Parker knows, this rivalry's roots go a lot deeper than just the baseball field. It's hard to understand if you're not in the state and if you're not uh, a Clemson Tiger or a South Carolina Gamecock, you really don't know how big the rivalry is. It's the best rivalry in college baseball. I guess as close to a football rivalry as you get, but great respect from, from coaches and players. It's a very healthy deal, and uh, we have a lot of fun with it. Baseball's right up there with football. There's, I guess you'd say, respect, but at the same point, uh, a little hatred between both of the two schools. If you lost every game, in the season and end up beating South Carolina at the end of the year, the season's still a success. You know, both coaches kind of told us, Sean, today, they really just want this to be about the game, not about the rivalry tonight. And I know that they say that, but as the fans are starting to fill into the seats right now, and I've been amongst the players and the coaches, you can just tell there's something a little different about the environment, about the vibe in this game tonight. Yes, you can, Aaron. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at the South Carolina starting lineup brought to you by Capital One. The freshman Evan Marzilli in left field leads off with Merrifields in right. Jackie Bradley Jr. is hitting 19 straight games and was one of the heroes last night. The center fielder hitting third. The freshman Christian Walker at first, Brady Thomas the DH, Adrian Morales at third. Kyle Enders will be the catcher, Bobby Haney at short, and Scott Wingle the second baseman. Batting ninth against the freshman. Jack Leggett has tremendous confidence in this young man out of Norwich, Connecticut. Dominic Leon, just 5'10, 175 pounds out of Norwich Free Academy. Three and one, has spent most of his time this season in the bullpen, but he has made nine starts. And Jack Leggett told us this morning we put him out there in some pressure pack situations. A couple of times earlier this year, and he has handled them very nicely. His first pitch. Is ball Got one it. low, and we're underway. Clemson a win away from the national championship finals. South Carolina needs to beat their fierce rivals twice. Marzilli, freshman out of Cranston, Rhode Island, had a couple of hits last night, and he might have another here. Fair ball, left field corner. Marzilli on his way into second with a leadoff double as it's played back in by Jeff Schaus. Well, if you want your good feelings to start, that's a nice way to start it off. And especially the emotions that these guys had going last night, you, you get an emotional win, you're down to your last out. Battle back, keep battling, finally get that base hit to knock in the winning run. And you come right out and get an extra base hit. It just, you know, sometimes a team can feel like they just have it going. Now with Merrifield, ninth round draft pick of the Kansas City Royals. Uh, at the very least to get Marzilli over to third. He takes a fastball strike. 325 for Merrifield with 13 homers. Tied for the team lead in home runs with Jackie Bradley Jr. who's on deck. Trying to bunt him over and it spins foul. Here we go, here we go. South Carolina's had a lot of difficulty getting bunts down for Ray Tanner and it's been frustrating for the coach in their three games here in Omaha. Well sometimes it gets difficult but it becomes more difficult because everybody going to the plate knowing that they have to lay one down they've already seen the struggles that they've had with other guys going up and it just becomes harder because you instead of thinking it's easy to just lay down a bunt you sit there and overthink it. The 0 2 pitch is outside from Leon who was the starter and winner in their clinching game of the regionals the super regionals against Alabama went five and two thirds innings in that game without allowing an earned run so that was with a lot of pressure on his shoulders trying to get them to Omaha chopped foul into the South Carolina dugout on the first base side. Leon has been on this mound and Jack Leggett was happy about that. 
had a chance to pitch third of an inning of relief against Oklahoma. So he's been out there under the bright lights and in front of this big crowd. Snaps off a breaking ball. And a good block by the freshman catcher, Spencer Keyboom. Steps Wilson Boyd. Marzilli tags and heads for third, and he's there without a throw. Let's give you the rest of the Clemson defense behind Dominic Leone, Jeff Schaus, Wilson Boyd, and Kyle Parker, the All American in right field, first round draft pick of the Colorado Rockies. They scuffle on the left side of the infield. Hinson's made 11 errors, and Brad Miller, the shortstop, made 31. Freeman and Schaefer and Keyboom behind the plate. Jackie Bradley Jr. It's a grounder to short. It should get the run in. Miller throws him out. But South Carolina is first on the board. Jackie Bradley Jr. with his team leading 59th run batted in. They sure remember the 58th. He took a 3-2 pitch with two outs in a right field. To knock in the game tying run in the 12th inning last night when they were behind two to one and if he made an out their season was over. Well last night he was in a similar situation with a runner on third base ended up popping up took a couple of good pitches and right there he was aggressive and make sure you just hit it to an infielder and score that run. Never want to get yourself too far into the count where you're get two strikes on you can swing through something. Christian Walker the hitter freshman first baseman out of Limerick Pennsylvania member of the Southeastern Conference all freshman team Gamecocks finished second in the SEC East behind Florida went right down to the final series of the regular season with Florida finished just behind the Gators we've seen problems with pop ups today with that gusty breeze blowing out toward left center. And the catch was made by Schaefer to win the inning. Marzilli got them started with a double. And Bradley brought him in. One nothing Gamecocks after a half inning at home. Back in Omaha, South Carolina leading one to nothing after a half inning. An RBI for Jackie Bradley Jr. Now the Clemson Tigers getting ready to come to bat. Chris Epps, the DH, will lead off. Their lineup is brought to you by Capital One. Mike Freeman, the second baseman, hitting second. Then Jeff Schausen left. Kyle Parker, their cleanup hitter, with 20 home runs. He's had a pretty quiet College World Series. He does have their only extra base hit in two games, a triple. Brad Miller is the shortstop. John Henson, their hottest hitter at third base. Richie Schaefer at first base. He's a freshman. Wilson Boyd, fifth year senior in center field, another freshman, Spencer Keyboom, behind the plate and batting ninth. And the big story for South Carolina, their pitching staff has been taxed. So they're turning to Michael Roth, sophomore from Greer, South Carolina, ordinarily a relief pitcher. And he's appeared in more than half their games. He hasn't started a game since April of last season, made just two career starts. But they're hoping. And with so many quality left handed bats in that Clemson lineup he can hold them off for three what? innings or so and they're going to use as many guys on this staff as they need to in a must win game for South Carolina Epps goes up there first ball swing he's now two for 11 in the College World Series as Scott Wingo threw him out it's a very good defensive team for South Carolina especially in that middle infield in the outfield they have Evan Marzilli Jackie Bradley Jr. was on the all Southeastern Conference defensive team and Whit Merrifield Adrian Morales Bobby Haney Scott Wingo and Christian Walker the infield and Kyle Enders is behind the plate made only one error in three games here that was last night and they dropped a pop-up oh. and that really frustrated Ray Tanner he said all the fundamentals we work on pop-up communication is probably the thing we spend the most time on and they botched it they're a pretty solid defensive team Mike Freeman 
Had an 0 for 4 last night against Oklahoma. He's a senior out of Orlando. Heading to the Diamondbacks minor league camp when this is over. He had hit in all 11 NCAA tournament games before that 0 for last night. And he's out on the chopper of the shortstop, Bobby Haney, two down. Well, Ray Tanner's not asking Michael Roth to go out and throw a complete game. I mean, they know that, you know, if they can get a couple innings out of Michael Roth, you know, they'd be happy. And one of the things they noticed in the Oklahoma game is J.R. Robinson came out and really held all these left-handed hitters. They have six left-handed hitters in their lineup for Clemson and really kept them in check. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're starting him is you now have a run. Just get a good start going and then see what happens. Oh. And it'll certainly help. We're off in South Carolina if the Tigers keep making quick outs to limit his pitch count. Jeff Schaus the hitter 327 is average and a nice play down at third by Adrian Morales and a one two three inning for Roth on three ground balls after one one nothing South Carolina. We just tested Quaker State motor oil that had driven thousands of miles in New York City taxis. And that used Quaker State still passed these critical tests for brand new oil, even when it's ready to be replaced. Quaker State. Real. Durable. Oil. He is the life of parties he has never attended. If he were to punch you in the face, you would have to fight off the strong urge to thank him. Sharks have a week dedicated to him. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I prefer those Zaki's. Stay thirsty, my friends. Hey, Clark, what you got there? It's my number. It's the amount I need to save to retire the way I want. Is that your number? Yeah. A gazillion, huh? Gazillion, bazillion. It's just a guesstimation. Oh, how do you plan for that? Well, I blindly throw money at it and hope something good happens. <laughs> so you really don't have a plan? I really don't. I... Do you know your number? We can help you find yours and take steps to get there. ING, helping you achieve financial freedom. Closed captioning for selected programming is brought to you by ShapeUps. Get in shape without setting foot in a gym with Shape Ups from Skechers. I'm Joe Montana, and I spent 16 years playing football, and Shape Ups have improved my strength and posture. Get in shape. Shape Ups from Skechers. On a hot night in Omaha with the wind blowing out, South Carolina and Clemson doing battle in the exact same situation these two programs were in eight years ago. The 2002 College World Series. Clemson needing just one win to advance to the championship game. South Carolina stood in the way. It was an intense matchup. Heated emotions. South Carolina, Steve Thomas belted a home run. It caused further tension. He flipped the bat toward the dugout. South Carolina won the first game for the second meeting. Won both games is turned out by combined 22 to 6. They advanced to the championship game where they lost to Texas. 12 4 and 10 2 were the finals. Jack Leggett says he wasn't going to address that with his team. He said my players were in junior high when that happened. It has no bearing on tonight's game. But Ray Tanner said he just wanted to use the lessons of history to let his team know it can be done. It has been done. Most of the time they said this rivalry is intense but respectful. Ray Tanner acknowledged that back in 2002 things got very heated and he said part of that was our fault. So when Steve Thomas flipped the bat and he rounded the bases and came to the dugout I said to him why don't you act like you've been there before and he was agitated that his team was Cadillac a little bit and Steve Thomas said but coach I really haven't been there before I haven't <laughs> hit a big home run like that the College World Series. Coach Tanner had a text from Steve Thomas last night after they won said let me know if you need me. He's now a stockbroker in New York City. Well that's the thing you can sit there and have you can teach your team how to do anything you oh. want. But when you get here and something happens and, and just the emotions of the game sometimes you know guys do things they want to you know let people know that they were they were kind of expecting to do that and, and show off a little bit. There's a shot toward the gap in left center for Brady Thomas who drove in the winning run last night. And for the second straight inning South Carolina has a leadoff double.
Well, Brady Thomas just continues to swing a hot bat, and they say he's Mr. Clutch. And this is just a ball that gets up in the zone, doesn't try and pull that ball, even though the wind's blowing out. He goes ahead and drives this ball the other way. Just a nice job of keeping your hands inside that ball and letting the barrel do the work. So another man in scoring position with nobody out for the Gamecocks. Here's Adrian Morales. Junior third baseman out of Hialeah, Florida. Miller, the shortstop, dancing around behind the runner, and a breaking ball swung on and missed. Adrian's a junior college transfer from Miami Dade. Has some home run pop. And has hit nine, including one here at the College World Series off the left field foul pole. Another good block by Keyboom. The freshman's been very impressive. Well, I think the struggles that South Carolina has had bunting the ball is one of the reasons they're letting Morales go ahead and swing away, try and get him over. And you just don't want to get a guy in a hole. Oh! Freshman Dominic Leone taking some deep breaths, pressure pack situation in a very hot I'm night, on, and that I'm hit on, Morales. Right no, five right balls. So this was the whole play umpire, Gus Rodriguez, and now Ray Tanner's out to argue. Gus Rodriguez, the home plate umpire, with Jim Jackson, Chris Koski, and Mark Ditsworth around the bases. Well, this has had an unusual sound to it, uh, you know, once we hear it. But, you know, the umpire's going by sound. He, he's, he can't tell if that actually hits him. No, 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 no. Right here. Right here. They hit the bottom of the bat. And you can hear that right there. He knows right away that, you know, just by the sound of it, you know it caught the bat. You don't think Morales has a metal hand? Aluminum hand? <laughs> There's a base in the right field. Might be a break that he wasn't awarded first base. Parker up and throwing, not in time. Keyboom down to second. But it's an RBI single for Adrian Morales and a 2 0 lead for South Carolina. Well, I think they'll take this, even though he's trying to go to second base. But he does his job hitting the ball to the right side. Just happens to find that hole. He gets the slider away, does a nice job just driving it that way, making sure he gets the run to third. Parker comes up, misses the cutoff man, and Keyboom does the right thing by stepping up, shortening that throw. Now a line drive to right, and it's caught by Parker. Ender's retired, and there are two outs here for Carolina in the second. And what makes this play right here is that Spencer Keyboom shows up and he, he moves up. He knows there's not going to be a play at home plate. He cut that ball off about 15 to 20 feet out in front of home plate and shortened his throw to second base. Well, he's a freshman, but he plays like a veteran behind the plate. Oh, absolutely. Uh, savvy. You know, again, he only had one start going into the NCAA tournament and really has been a big bonus for them just as a, a receiver and, and no, gotten some no, really big no. hits for them. All freshman battery for Jack Leggett tonight. One one pitch up and away to Bobby Haney the number eight hitter the shortstop out of Smithtown New York. You don't get much offense from the bottom of the order. He's a 257 hitter. Freeman retreats. That ends the inning. A run on two hits and a 2 nothing lead after an inning and a half for the Gamecocks. Almanary and the LSU Tigers hoisting the baseball national championship trophy. They're not smiling today. Some disturbing news from Louisiana this morning, Aaron. 
That's right, Sean. Chad Jones, who we saw pitch here in Omaha. He was also a safety on the LSU Tigers football team. He was involved in a single car accident this morning in New Orleans, and he was actually in emergency surgery for over seven hours today. And doctors were trying to work reportedly on multiple fractures to his femur and thigh area and his left leg. He also had a large gash in his thigh that caused a huge amount of blood loss. Now his agent has reportedly told a local Louisiana TV station within the hour that they believe the circulation has been restored to Jones's left foot. Of course, I'm just reading that and getting that from LSU officials. We are waiting actually for his agent to make a statement about Chad Jones and what is going on there. But, you know, Sean, we got a chance to talk to this guy. I've worked several of his college football games. Such a great kid to be around. He was drafted by the New York Giants in the 2010 NFL draft. And you just, our prayers and thoughts are with his family, with Chad, and with the LSU family as well. That's very well said, Aaron, indeed. He will continue to be in our thoughts and prayers. Third round draft choice of the Giants. Also drafted by Milwaukee in baseball. It's a good high. He and teammate Jared Mitchell became the first NCAA athletes to win a BCS football title in a college World Series championship. After the Tigers won it all here in Omaha last summer. South Carolina leading this one two to nothing with Clemson batting against Michael Roth who retired the side on just six pitches in the first inning. We're hoping for an explosion from Kyle Parker, another two sport athlete. Starting quarterback of their football team led them to a victory in their oh. ball game over at Kentucky in the Music City Bowl. 20 homers, but they haven't been coming as frequently lately. Jack Leggett's hoping that the power returns. Oh. Whoa, was that a good pitch? Very close. Ball four. Roth wanted it. He's not going to get it. Well, one of the things you're going to notice with Mike Roth is that against lefties, he drops down, really becoming effective. And he's a first baseman by trade also. And, and they found out that he could throw on the side, just taking ground balls and throwing down to second base. He throws over the top to righties and drops down against lefties. Really, probably the reason he's pitching to start this game. Normally, not a starter. And he's your prototypical situational lefty. Generally comes in to get a lefty or two out and then comes out of the ball game. <laughs> Facing the left handed hitting Brad Miller, who turned to bunt and looked at a strike. That's also very good coaching. Mark Calvi, the pitching coach, noticed in the infield, Roth would throw the ball sidearm. He asked him, Have you ever done that from the mound? Roth said, No. Well, let's try it. And he's become a much more effective pitcher against left handed hitters. Well I would say most guys can't do that. I mean you look at most pitchers they, they're so mechanical that they can't adapt and do that. But a, a lot of guys drop down these days just to become more effective and difficult. But you know it's easier said than done. Most guys can't throw strikes by just dropping down and, and creating a slider and creating an angle on the left handed hitters. Roth has pitched in relief in two of their previous three games here in Omaha in the opener against Oklahoma. He pitched an inning without being scored upon. Then he appeared in last night's game for an inning and a third, but threw only 13 pitches. Beautiful pitch there. Strike three on the outside corner. His first strikeout of the night. And one out here in the second. Well, this is exactly what we're talking about. He's over the top against righties, but he drops down and throws that slider. Reaching on the outer half, and it's just a tough angle for lefties. They're trying to pull out of there, and he's dropping that slider with the ball moving away on the outside corner. He got inside of another left handed hitter, John Henson, who's the hottest hitter in America right now in the nine NCAA tournament games. The sophomore from Asheville is at 514. Going 19 for 37, including five homers, 13 runs batted in, and 12 runs scored, raising his season home run total to 17. 352 average. Parker back to first. You would think they would want to move him up the lineup. I think Coach Leggett 
kind of gets a little superstitious. I don't want to mess with anything that's working. It's all going nice. Keep him right where he's at. Come on. Interesting. Maybe that's how much respect they have for how nasty Roth is as a lefty on lefty because Henson's as hot as anybody. He's trying to blunt. Jack Leggett just kind of shook his head as to say, all right, that's what you want to do. Sixth time they've been here. Under Jack Leggett. Soft liner caught at second. Double play. Wingo caught it, threw the walker to easily double up Parker and end the inning. After two, it's South Carolina two and Clemson nothing. Go down presented by State Farm. And then on ESPN 2's Monday Night Baseball, 7 Eastern time, you get a look at two of the game's brightest rookies. Steven Strasburg leads the Nationals against Jason Hayward and the Braves. Strasburg with 41 strikeouts in his first four career games. That is the major league record. Three of those four starts, he's had nine or more strikeouts and no walks. Here's Scott Wingo, number nine hitter for South Carolina. In there primarily for his glove, although he's an improved hitter. Last year he hit under 200 for the year. When I spoke of the day, he said, "Yeah, last year I was awful." He said I was better this year until recently. I'm in a little bit of a slump right now. He's at 259. Does have some pop, nine homers. Facing Dominic Leone, who's given up that leadoff double in each of the first two innings. That's pretty well struck to right. Parker. Near the edge of the warning track makes the catch. Of course, Wingo is the son of one of the great athletes in recent Clemson athletic history. His dad, Billy Wingo, was a two sport star for the Clemson Tigers. Played football and baseball with an all ACC baseball player as an infielder at Clemson in the mid 70s. He twice came to Omaha. Played in the College World Series under Bill Wilhelm. But he's on the South Carolina side tonight cheering for his son. When I spoke with Scott Wingo today. He said, Yep, growing up, I went to just about every Clemson home football game, a lot of the baseball games. We are avid Clemson fans, but when I took the visit to South Carolina, I just kind of fell in love with it. My dad said he just wanted me to go where I was happy and He's been very helpful and supportive. Well, I think that's great. You, you know, you, in situations where you're going to, family wise, you're pushed in one direction and you get the ability to go where it feels right. And, and he's going to get an opportunity. He, they didn't know if he would really get an opportunity to play at Clemson or at South Carolina, but South Carolina was into him and they wanted him to come there. So that, that's one of those things that you want to go play where they want you. Two one pitch now from Leon to Marzilli. Freshman against freshman. Two New Englanders here. Marzilli from Cranston, Rhode Island. And Leon from Norwich, Connecticut. Good fastball. Foul tipped into the mid of Keyboom. And a full count on South Carolina's leadoff hitter. He looks like a freshman. He is a young looking man. Dominic Leone. He walked him with a ball low. Hey. South Carolina leading two to nothing. They began with a loss to Oklahoma. Of course, that was the game delayed at the start for more than four hours, and then the middle of the game by more than two hours. They lost that one, faced elimination right away, but they beat Arizona State in an elimination game, setting the number one team of the country home, and then one of the all-time comeback victories. I don't know how you have a win that's more dramatic than down to your last strike with your season hanging in the balance, and you score twice and win. Well, I think the only way it would be is if it was the national championship game. 
Runner goes and the pitch is swung on and missed. It got past Keyboom. And it'll be a stolen base for Marzilli. So he's in scoring position again. And it's his seventh stolen base of the year without being caught. And now Dan Pepicelli, the pitching coach, is going to the mound. First year on the staff at Clemson. Longtime head coach, Division Three at Hartwick, and from 2001 through last season, he was at St. John Fisher in Rochester, New York. Very happy there. He's the head coach of the non-scholarship D3 program. But he said he always admired the Clemson program. He had heard Jack Leggett speak at some coaching clinics. And he got in touch with Coach Leggett said, I'd like to come down and shadow you for a few days if you don't mind. Watch how you run practices and interact with your team, organize things. Jack Leggett said he was very impressed by what a bright guy Dan Pepicelli was, invited him to come back and work at some Clemson camps. They formed a relationship. And when last fall, Jack Leggett had nobody on his staff, he called Dan Pepicelli, said, Would you like to come down and be my assistant? Dan took it, and it's been a nice marriage. It's worked out very well for both of them. Yeah. Here they are at the CWS. Yeah, they've done, he's done a great job here with Clemson. I wonder if he thought he was bright because he was coming down to shadow him <laughs> instead of somebody else. Throw the second. Oh, boy, is that close. Freeman wins to bed after the safe call by Chris Koski. Yeah, and this is just a quick little turn. It's a read by the second baseman to come around and. That's awful close. Oh. In the dirt, the ball to Merrifield and fly to center his first time up. I think if I'm on second base, I'm getting a little closer. <laughs> well, the second baseman isn't very far away. Mike Freeman's right behind the bag, basically. Take one more step closer to second. There you go. Good pitch, fastball outside corner. <laughs> Up and in, there is action already in the Clemson bullpen. David Hazelden is warming up. These two teams played three times during the regular season. They used to play every year four times each season. Chopped to short. Miller low throw dug out by Schaefer. They decided this year that they would reduce it to a three game series. One game on each home field and the other at a neutral site. So this year in early March, they played the first game at Clemson in front of more than 6,300 fans. The Tigers won by a run. The next day they played a neutral site game in a Red Sox affiliate minor league park in Greenville, South Carolina won more than 7,000 there. And then a sellout crowd in Columbia. Oh. They watched Clemson hammer. South Carolina. What was the word Ray Tanner used? They got boat raced. We got boat raced. We got duck snored out of Ray last <laughs> night. We got boat raced this morning at our meeting. Not good when you get boat oh. raced, apparently. He likes duck snorts. He does when their team does duck snorts. He doesn't like boat race. He'd like to boat race Clemson tonight. We hit two nothing. They are a team that generally has to scratch and claw for runs. They tend to win low scoring close games leaning on their excellent pitching. Very deep pitching staff and that'll be tested. Bradley Jr. fouls it out of play. Well, well when they scored their big they had their big run uh, inning against Arizona State he said that's not us. You, you know I, I'll take it but we don't count on that. We don't count on those big innings. I think they're more of a chip at you team. You know obviously they've got to run in every inning. They're not just the big you know the big inning team. Bradley knocked in a run with a ground out in the first his eighth RBI of this College World Series that leads all players here. This is his fourth game. Of course he had the enormous RBI last night in his last at bat. He had an 0 for going until that hit extended that hit streak to 19 games. Oh. 
In the air, well struck, left center, long run for Schaus. That ball's off the bottom of the wall at the 375 mark. Another RBI for Bradley Jr. Marzilli scores for the second time. They've scored a run in every inning. And the Gamecocks lead three to nothing. When we spoke with Jack Leggett this morning, he was very confident that the freshman Leon would pitch well tonight, but he scuffled, and he'll be replaced by Hazelden when we come back. Jackie Bradley Jr. leading a team that sometimes struggles to score runs. He had a home run Sunday against Oklahoma. Launched another one. Three-run shot Tuesday against Arizona State. And, of course, last night, the game-tying hit. It set up Brady Thomas's heroics as they rally down to their last strike. Two outs in the bottom of the 12th and a run down, a win by one, and eliminate Oklahoma. And tonight, he has two runs batted in, including that swing a moment ago that resulted in a double. It knocked Dominic Leone out of the game. They picked the most outstanding player in this College World Series right now. He'd be it. Well, he'd be one of them. You got Bo Amaral with UCLA that's also hot, but you know, Jackie Bradley Jr. is getting the big hits. I mean, he's, he's hitting his home runs. He's driving in the big runs, and, and that becomes important, especially when you're in the situation that South Carolina's in. You just want to get guys on base and let him hit. Here's David Hazelden, sophomore from Spartanburg, not far from the Clemson campus, making his first appearance of this College World Series. Big guy, 6'3", 225, and his first pitch is a ball. This big guy throws about 88, 89. Got a slider. Change up is, is another pitch he mixes in there, but he's really aggressive, and when he stays aggressive and stays low, he's pretty good. Oh. Coach Leggett told us we might see Hazelden tonight. He pitched well in one of those games earlier this year against South Carolina. Facing Christian Walker here. Trying to get the Gamecocks to strand Bradley at second base. Oh. Close, but a ball. Walker popped out to end the first. Well, again, I think we're just going to see matchups all night with both coaches. They're not necessarily looking for a guy that's, you know, he has to go nine. They're just looking inning to inning. Popped up for the shortstop, Miller, who makes the catch. That ends the inning. If South Carolina scores again, they've had one run in every inning. They've had a double in every inning. They lead three to nothing as we go to the bottom of the third in Omaha. Well, while we were away at commercial, Jack Leggett summoned the troops, giving them a little pep talk. I think one thing that has to give them some positive thoughts going forward is the South Carolina bullpen has been used quite regularly here. And Roth probably can't go more than another inning or two, although he has had a low pitch count through the first couple of innings. But well, that, they're yeah. not going to be looking at him all night. Absolutely. I think th those are the things that Coach Leggett's probably telling his team. He says, be patient. You know, don't go out there and swing at the first pitch just to swing at a first pitch. You know, be aggressive, but make sure you're getting the pitch that you want to swing at because Michael Roth's not going to be out here the whole game. You know, you, you want to at least make him work, and you want him out of there by the fifth. Oh. Roth's allowed just to walk through two innings. He's faced the minimum six batters. Clemson hit into a double plate end last inning. Richie Schaefer turned on one and pulled it foul. Well, Aaron needs her glove because that one almost got her. You didn't take your glove down there, did you? No, I'm good. I don't need ice. I, you know what? I am just a warrior. Kyle got it a couple days ago, in, or a couple years ago in the thigh. I just took it off the wrist, but no worries, guys. I'm not like a Major League Baseball player. I don't have to be on the DL. Sorry, Ooh. Robin. <laughs> you are so tough. Oh. Was that your microphone holding hand? You want to know if you're going to be able to <laughs> continue. There's a ball down the right field line, a fair ball into the corner. Played by Merrifield. Schaefer in the second with a leadoff double. First hit of the night for Clemson. 
And let's send it right back down to the very tough Aaron Andrews. <laughs> hey, prior to the injury on the field to uh, the sideline reporter, just kidding, Jack Leggett, like you guys mentioned, gathered his guys around him. Robin said he was talking about patience. That was right. He's also just telling him to relax. Just saying, guys, you know, just play to win. Don't worry about this. That's one thing you guys were noticing about Jack Leggett this time around, how relaxed and calm he is. It's funny, he's thinking his player's a little uptight. And he's noticeably more relaxed than previous appearances here. And when we asked him about that this morning, he said, yes, I think I am more loose. Chopped on the left side. Morales cut it off. Out. Throws out Boyd. The runner goes to third. Schaefer 90 feet away with one out. And Dan Pepicelli, when we were talking about Jack being more relaxed, said an example of that was in the middle of the year. They had a roller coaster season, got off to a great start. Went 17 and 2. But then over the next 23 games, they went 8 and 15. And Dan Pepicelli said that was really the time when you he saw up close what an outstanding manager of people Jack Leggett is. Got the team refocused, back on track. They finished 18 and 6 during that 8 and 15 stretch. Oh. They went 0 and 11 in games decided by one or two losses. So that makes it even worse because not only are you losing, but you're losing all these excruciating games. Well, it's also the reason why he's so happy and excited about his team being here and being in this situation is that, you know, they have had to struggle. The pitch gets away, and here comes the first one of the ball game for the Tigers. Schaefer in as the ball got past the catcher, Kyle Enders. Enders has been prone to pass balls this year. He's had nine of them. And they score that a pass ball. And Clemson is on the board. Well, this is just the pitch that gets away. You know, it's just a sinker going away, trying to get a ground ball, maybe a comebacker, and Enders just doesn't get his glove on. And now a deep drive but foul for Keyboom. Well, congratulations to Edwin Jackson of the Arizona Diamondbacks. He just completed a no hitter against the Tampa Bay Rays in St. Petersburg. What a season it's been. Perfect games, no hitters, non perfect games that should have been. Yeah, and he, I mean, he's a tremendous pitcher. I had the opportunity to play with him. Uh, he was a young pitcher on the Dodgers, just a ton of potential. And, you know, it's nice to see him. It's nice to see him come back and, and have some success. He got traded and, and was in Detroit for a while. He was also at, in Tampa for a while. He has a lot of ability. Keyboom, we mentioned the other night, has dual citizenship. His dad's from the Netherlands. Spencer's from Marietta, Georgia. Started one game in the regular season. They gave him a shot in the ACC tournament after they had already been eliminated. They threw him out there against Georgia Tech. Coach Leggett wasn't wild about the way the two catches ahead of him playing. Keyboom had three hits, was his usual solid self behind the plate. Jack said, I believe in riding the hot hand. We've seen that at other positions on this team as well. And Spencer's been the starter ever since. I think sometimes you can be loyal to a fault and just you're going to play a guy just because he's going to play a guy. And, you know, sometimes guys earn the right to, to do that, and Spencer Keyboom has done that. Chop to short. Bobby Haney is smooth. Two down. We were talking about Major League Baseball, and there have been some all time baseball greats who played here at the College World Series, including Dave Winfield, who's a multi sport athlete, and Paul Molitor for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. I didn't know Mike Schmidt was an Ohio U Bobcat, did you? Yes, I, I saw that graphic the other day. So I made sure I remembered that. Well, you're in the College Baseball Hall of Fame, are you not? Yes, I am. So if we extend that to include college and Major League Baseball Hall of Fame, you would be on that graphic, as you should be with those other all-time greats. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for your support. Oh. No, in all seriousness, I mean, when we list the all-time great players in the history of college baseball, your name has to be in the conversation. 58 game hitting streak. National Player of the Year. One of the very first inductees into the College Baseball Hall of Fame. That's a foul ball off the bat of X. Thanks, Sean. 
I'm your agent. I know. You just keep going. Keep keep piling on. Well, if I could find the piece of paper that you gave me when you had written out all of your accomplishments, I would read the rest of them. I just need to write better. I, I, I lost it in my my pile penmanship of is a little off. Epps grounded out. He's another example of Jack Leggett going to a hot hand and when the player cools off putting a player back in. Epps played for a while then he was out of the lineup for a while. He got put back in in the NCAA tournament. And until recently he'd been a big part of their success. He's cooled off a bit. And he's had some bad looking swings against lefties here in Omaha. Clemson's on the board. It's three to one after three. Back in Omaha, time for the Coke Zero game track. Through three innings, South Carolina scored a run in every inning. And Clemson just got on the board on the pass ball. Dominic Leone, the start of Clemson, lasted only two and two thirds innings. Jackie Bradley continues to excel in the clutch for the Gamecocks. He's driven in two of their three runs. So it's David Hazelden on the mound. For Clemson came in last inning in relief of Leon and got the last out of the inning. Brady Thomas found the first pitch away. He doubled, leading off the second and scored. They got leadoff doubles in each of the first two innings, and both of those leadoff batters came around to score. They have the lead man on again. Thomas two for two. By the way, Edwin Jackson. In his no hitter tonight for the Diamondbacks against Tampa Bay, walked eight and struck out six. Does that diminish it at all for you? Eight walks? Um, no, nobody got any hits. No one got a no, hit. No, Still no, a it's no hitter. A perfect game. It would, you know, obviously that would be different because he would. Nobody would have got on base, but you know, eight walks. He's just picking the corners and and nobody gets a hit. He was going for strikeouts, Sean. He just happened to miss. Now he had eight walks. Adrian Morales the batter he singled to knock in a run in the second. Obviously it feels diminished no, to you. Well wasn't exactly a masterpiece. I mean no, a no hitter is a no hitter but eight walks is certainly different when than what Galarraga did for Detroit earlier this year. True but that you know that was a perfect game almost I mean, well. Yes, it almost. was a perfect game. It was a perfect game for the most part. Ish, as the kids like to say. A rocket fouled down by the Clemson bullpen where there is action. Scott Firth is warming up. Thomas has three stolen bases this year. We mentioned Coach Leggett mentioned he might use Hazelden tonight in part because David was excellent. One of his best outings of the year was against South Carolina back on March 5th. He pitched four scoreless and hitless innings and walked only one, unlike Edwin Jackson. Well, that's probably why he got got this little opportunity right here. You walk that many people. I don't think Coach Leggett's going to let you in the game, but he's not throwing a no hitter. No, he's given up a hit just a moment ago. Chopped up the middle, top hop. He's out right here. He's out. He's they out. They have the runner out, going out of the baseline. Apparently, it's a double play. Thomas. Made a right hand turn. So Freeman, after fielding it on that tricky in between hop, made a nice play. Two outs and the base is empty. Well, this is a high hop to the second baseman, Freeman, and, and he does a nice job. Instead of flipping the ball, he's out right here. He's he goes out. after he's the runner. Right. He's out. And you can hear the umpire telling him he's out by going out of the baseline. As soon as you make a move that's not at the base, you're considered out. Here you go. Ender's got tied up and rolled one foul wide of third. He lined to right his first time up. That's one of the things we get the opportunity to have here at the College World Series is all these microphones that are all over the place. We have 80 of them placed throughout the field. 
So we get to hear a lot of things that, that normally you wouldn't hear in a major league game. Oh. And we commend our great audio technicians. It's a lot of microphones to keep track of. And they do it flawlessly. Oh. Breaking ball missed two and one on Enders. South Carolina in a must win situation facing elimination. If they do not win this one Clemson has a mulligan they're undefeated so far. There's a deep drive to left and when it lands it'll be four to one. Just the third home run of the year for Kyle Enders. Well, this is the ball that's left over the middle part of the plate, and he just does a nice job of dropping the barrel right on it. And he knows it right away, but that's a short, compact swing, gets extension, and you can hear it. You know it right away. Wind blowing out in that direction. He didn't need the help with that shot. Well, again, we had talked about them not being an explosive team. A little lob to left for Jeff Schaus. And that ends the inning. Still one run in every inning for South Carolina. Kyle Parker will bat third in the fourth for Clemson. Well, he had a 2020 year in the 2009-2010 academic year. Kyle Parker, 20 touchdown passes as he helped the football Tigers to a top 25 final ranking, the ACC Atlantic Division title. It was his goal to match that on the diamond. He did with 20 homers. They helped them to an ACC baseball crown. Clemson down four to one. Mike Freeman, the leadoff hitter, 0 for 1 tonight, grounded out his first time up. Oh. The Clemson Sports Information Department did some research. They contacted every Division I school that plays college football and discovered that no student athlete had ever achieved even a 2015 in the same oh. academic year. Parker had the 2020. Only two other Division I football, baseball athletes in history have had a 2010, 20 passing touchdowns and 10 home runs. Freeman up the middle. That's the wrong place to hit him. Haney threw him out, one out. Here's Aaron Andrews. All right, Sean, thanks so much. I am with Kyle Parker's parents, Carl and Kathy, joining three, me now. Well, first, I'll ask you the obvious. I've been to Clemson, seen football games. What's the nerve factor here at the College World Series versus when you're watching your son play quarterback? I think it's amped up about the same as when uh, you got 85,000 in front of it, just the pressure and knowing you're competing for a national championship. It kind of gives it that little bit of an edge. And speaking of nerves, obviously your son having a big decision to make. All of Tiger Nation would love to see him come back and play for the football team. How's it been on the family? Well, you know, we've been busy because they're still playing baseball, so that's been a great thing. We haven't had to, you know, make a decision and think about it because we're too just so concentrated on what oh. we're doing now. So it's been good for us. And Carl, obviously, we were just talking you playing in the NFL, you know, talking to Dabo Sweeney. He's saying, I think he should do both. What advice are you giving your son right now? Well, I think it really comes down to KP making some decisions for himself. Um, you know, we've been excited about the opportunity. Being a part of Clemson's just been a wonderful experience for KP. And I think that, um, you know, he'll, he'll make a wise decision. Well, it's been great covering him either way. Whatever he decides. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Aaron. All right, Sean. Yeah, he's a classy young man. I'm sure his parents are very proud. We mentioned the two others who are 2010 athletes. Rodney Pete for Southern California. Josh Fields of Oklahoma State. Or as Robin likes to call it, the house that Robin Ventura built. John Elway just missed it at Stanford. Nine home runs after a 24 touchdown pass year. Oh. Colorado got themselves a, a, a fine there and they like to draft those guys that are quarterbacks and 
baseball players. They have Todd Helton was a quarterback at Tennessee, and uh, Matt Holliday was a great high school quarterback, but chose instead of going to Oklahoma State to play football, they actually signed with the Rockies. So I mean, they've had a, a lot of success with those type players. Kyle walked his first time up. Michael Roth, they were hoping he'd give him three innings. He's going to give them four if he can dispatch Parker, four at least. A lot of quality left-handed bats in this lineup, so Ray Tanner's run a tough lefty up there. And he's done just what his coach hoped he would do. He's thrown 45 pitches now to hit Parker off the foot. Carl Parker, if you're wondering, was an NFL wide receiver, played at Vanderbilt, then played in the NFL for the Bengals, Jets, and Vikings. And to me, one of the great stories in that family is the mom, Kathy. You might recall she was featured on ESPN's Outside the Lines back in 2007. She helped raise more than $800,000 for a high school in Alaska, Barrow High School. She had seen a program that talked about how they didn't have a field. It was all rocks and dirt and... They were trying to play football up there on a field that was basically unplayable. So <laughs> she started raising funds with the benefit of the internet, raised $800,000. They named the field in Alaska after her. The family's from Florida. It's Kathy Parker Field. Miller grounded out. That ends the inning. It's four to one in South Carolina after four. Do you Twitter or whatever you tweet, whatever they call that? I'm not. No, I'm challenged. Yeah. I'm challenged in that area. I think we're like the only ones left for the last holdouts for Twitter. He's got. I. It's just hard for me. One. It's hard for me. I know Kyle. Kyle does it. Aaron does it. I'm, I hope Aaron can still do it after taking that ball, that ball off the wrist. But yeah, is that her Twitter wrist? I don't. I don't know. Hopefully she'll still be able to tweet. I think it's called tweet. Okay. Right? If you send out a Twitter, a tweet. I'm going with whatever you oh. say. Scott Wingo is the leadoff hitter. 2-0 the count as he faces David Hazelden. One run in every inning for South Carolina. They've had at least one extra base hit in every inning. Not the starter, Dominic Leone, out after only two and two-thirds. He gave up three runs earned on four hits and a walk. He threw 45 pitches. Hazelden's thrown an inning and a third. He's given up one run on two hits. He gave up the home run to Kyle Enders. Last inning, there's a rocket to center, and it is caught. Nice play by Wilson Boyd as he slid down onto a knee. And Wingo denied. He's 0 for 2. Well, this ball is held up in the air by the wind. The wind's blowing out towards left center field, and Wilson Boyd comes in, does a nice job of sliding. To keep that ball up, you don't want to dive head first right there. He just does a nice little slide like he's going into second base, keeps his glove out in front of him. Oh. Ball down and into Marzilli. Looked like he was trying to say the ball hit my foot. Gus Rodriguez didn't think so. Marzilli's had another good night. He doubled and scored in the first, walked still second, and scored on the Jackie Bradley double in the third. Breaking ball inside again. And we've talked about the rivalry. They've played 291 times now. They play every year, dating back to 1899. Oh. And we asked the coaches this morning, does it have much of an impact on recruiting? And they said, not as much as you'd think. These are two national programs for the most part. They don't go all over the country, but they have gathered players from plenty of ah. different states. And as Ray Tanner said this morning, in our state of South Carolina, you pretty much choose sides when you put your bib on right after you're born. I mean, you're born into a Clemson family or a South Carolina family, and it's very rare that once you've chosen sides, you switch allegiance. We mentioned that happened in the Wingo family. Ray Tanner said, you know, we thought we had a shot at Scott Wingo because we weren't really sure that Clemson was going all that hard after him, even though his dad was a star player there. He told Mr. Wingo, we really want Scott. And he wound up 
playing for South Carolina. Here's Aaron after the walk to Marzilli. All right, Scott, thanks so much. I am here with the Wingo family, Bill and Nancy. You look great in those colors. I mean, I know they're not the uh, Clemson orange. How hard is it for you every single day to still put those colors on? It was a little difficult at first, but uh, I got used to it, especially during baseball season. But I've got ragged a lot by a lot, a lot of my Clemson buddies. But uh, I'm kind of getting used to it now. Kind of getting. You obviously played here 76-77 with Clemson's baseball team. You're also on the football team, as we've mentioned. What's more nerve-wracking, playing out there? You remember what it was like, or cheering for your kid? Probably watching my son play at second. And but I, I also like to mention that uh, that's the position I played, so he's playing in the same place where I played. Makes it pretty special, and especially here in Omaha. I was just going to say, Mom, how special is that? I mean, obviously, Dad's getting a little choked up here about the position that your son plays. What is it like for you just seeing a proud Papa over here? Oh, I'm just very proud of both of them, and um, I'm very proud of Scott playing for the Gamecocks. They wanted him, and he is very happy there. So I'm proud of him. Well, you look great in that color. It's your color, I think. Don't listen to your teammates. You look great in that color. All right, guys. Back up to you. All right, Aaron. Thank you. Yeah, Wingo is very happy there. We talked with Scott today. Very nice young man. So he took the visit. He liked it. Decided that's where he was going to go. Said the dad does give him help with hitting, but he told his dad, you know, I can handle the fielding part. Scott's very <laughs> confident in his glove work, and he should be. Interesting aspect of this rivalry. Dad played on one side, the son on the other, both playing with distinction. They have a couple others in the family. Scott has two older brothers and both baseball players. He told us his brother Brad played at South Carolina Upstate, where he holds the single season hit record. And Gaston, another older brother, was a pitcher at Spartanburg Methodist oh. College, a lefty. He tried to go to South Carolina too. Transferred there, tried out for the team and didn't make it. So Scott wasn't really the trailblazer. Heading to the other side from where his dad used to put on the uniform. High fly ball up into that breeze and blowing towards center. And the catch made by Boyd. And for the first time tonight, South Carolina has a score this inning. They still lead four to one. They sing elimination halfway through the ball game. Welcome back to the College World Series. South Carolina leading Clemson four to one. And I'm joined by the Tigers head coach, Jack Leggett. Coach, I have to ask just one hit so far from your guys. What's going on offensively? Well, we we're chasing some balls down in the, in the bottom of the zone, and he's got good ball movement and hit a lot of ground balls. And uh, so we have to set our sights a little bit higher, look for the ball up more in the, uh, more in the strike zone. I heard you say to your players in a huddle early in the game, just relax, just calm down. How much do you think that's a factor? Well, we're playing a little bit tentative, you know, uh, and I think, just think we've got to loosen up, relax, break the ice a little bit, get a run or two, and I think we'll be very back in the ball game. All right, thank you for your time. All right, Sean. Aaron, thank you. Tonight, the candor of Jack Leggett, we visited with him this morning. We asked him, what would it mean to you and your program if you could win this national championship for the first time? He said it would mean everything. You know, a lot of guys, when you ask a question like that, ah, oh, you know, it's not about that, but... He said it would mean so much to all our players, our coaches. I thought Coach was pretty emotional. He talked about his parents, his dad Les, his mom Marilyn up in Vermont. Dad's 82 years old, had a stroke. His mom follows every game. She's 79 years old. She travels by herself every year down to Clemson. Said she flies down from Burlington, Vermont, gets her own rental car, drives to my house. Keeps notes on every game. Well, the other day when here's a little number down the first. And he out recorded by the first baseman Christian Walker. Henson retired. The game got suspended the other night. The resumption was on ESPNU. Mrs. Leggett found out she did not have ESPNU on her cable. So she called the cable company, said, I need to get ESPNU. They told her it was going to take a couple of days. She said, no, you don't understand. I need it now. The game is coming on. And she got ESPNU, was able to watch the game. And we send a blow out to her up in beautiful Burlington, Vermont. Jack was born in Bangor, Maine, but grew up in South Burlington. 
What a job Mike Roth is doing. They were hoping for three innings. They said it'd be a mix and match outing. Use the bullpen. Use the whole staff tonight if they had to in this elimination situation. But he's been dominant, and that's been the case throughout this College World Series and NCAA tournament. In the College World Series now, he's pitched seven innings, including four and a third tonight. The run that he's allowed tonight is the only run and only hit that he's given up in uh, six and two thirds innings here. Schaefer hit and he takes a base. Well, I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to go. You know, you look at most of his outings, his outings, you know, he's had 34 appearances, but only 25 innings. So he's, he's not used to really stretching it out. So you're, you're asking a lot, and they're in a situation where. They have to win this game tonight and conserve as many pitchers as they can because they're going to have to come back tomorrow if they win this game and, pl and play against Clemson again. So, you know, you're, you're taking your chances by stretching them out. Oh. And in the NCAA tournament, as he missed inside to Wilson Boyd, this is South Carolina's ninth game. He's appearing in his seventh of the nine games. He's pitched 12 innings in the NCAA tournament, given up only two runs and only three hits. Well, he's been tremendous. Well, the offensive focus has been on Jackie Bradley. Roth should get quite a bit of attention for his exploits on the mound as well. Boyd grounded out his first time up. I mentioned last night he's an excellent student. Roth, 3.8 grade point average, best student on the team. They have a team GPA, a Q. Of better than 3.1. Coach Tanner's very proud of that. They have the highest team GPA of the eight schools here. Oh. Up and away. It is interesting, Robin. They might change in a moment. Nobody warming up for South Carolina. He has breezed along, but you'd have to think at some point in the not too distant future the fatigue would have to set in I mean, he's been out there day after day yeah and he's, he's up in the 55 pitch total mark and you know that, that's just something he hasn't been stretched out that much <laughs> and it's all taking all the way for a strike and uh, as we say it now there's some folks trotting down to the bullpen and it's also difficult for him because he does drop down against the lefties and comes over the top against the righty so he's not repeating the same thing over and over again that delivery High chopper down to third. Morales to second for one and the first not in time. Boyd beat it. They do erase Schaefer. Five to four. Two outs now in the fifth with South Carolina leading Clemson four to one. Well again you, you know he drops down against the lefties. He has different style of pitching to who's at the plate. And that's one of the things they saw from Oklahoma the other day is the way J.R. Robinson was dropping down very tough on lefties. He's running the ball inside, making a pull out there, and then coming right back with a slider on the outer half. And he's just mixing up both sides of the plate. And they just can't seem to get on track against him. Yeah, the left-handed hitters are 0 for 12 against Roth tonight. Of course, there's only been one hit for Clemson. That was the double by Richie Schaefer, who scored the Clemson run in the third inning on a pass ball. And it's not surprising that they have another lefty warming up in their bullpen. It's Tyler Webb who wound up being the winning pitcher last night when they came from behind to eliminate Oklahoma in unbelievably dramatic fashion. Spencer oh. Keyboom takes a breaking ball outside. I, th I think you're right that you know you're going to put another lefty in there not somebody you normally see come out of their bullpen but as effective as Michael Roth has been you, you just keep going with what's hot. Oh. Behind the last couple of hitters, two balls and no strikes now. And there's a strike. Ray Tanner said this morning, "We're not looking for a quality start from Roth. We'd be happy with 
three good innings. But he might give him a quality start. That would be six innings with three runs allowed or less. In the air should be a routine play and right for Whit Merrifield. Michael Roth, brilliant tonight for South Carolina with the Gamecocks still facing elimination with a loss in this one. They're up four to one. Welcome back to Omaha, Nebraska. South Carolina leading Clemson four to one and the Gamecocks head coach Ray Tanner joining me right now and coach let me ask you Michael Roth giving up one run one hit what's been working for him well he's been able to get his sinker in the zone and they hit some balls on the ground he's pitched a great game he's actually given us a, a little bit more than I expected him to but we'll ride him for as long as we can so that's my next question fatigue factor how long do you think you can ride well, him? I don't know we're just going uh, batter by batter inning by inning right now he says he feels good so we'll see what happens all right we appreciate your time thank you all right Sean yeah, he's been outstanding this is a career high five innings pitch for Roth and it comes on the heels of a lot of recent action as we chronicled earlier. Yeah, we talked about visiting with Jack Leggett this morning and how he was very candid about how much it would mean to him was were his team able to win this national title. Ray Tanner said the exact same thing. He said it would be an out of body experience. So that's why we coach among other reasons. I think that's what's admirable about both of them is you're not getting the cookie cutter. You know, oh, it's just about the kids, and it, uh, that's not the reason why we're here. Or, you know, letting these kids grow up. I mean, they do all of that, but but winning is important, and and you don't work that hard without wanting to win. And, and these guys, I mean, they're pretty upfront about it, which is great. Line to hit, well struck by Walker. Wilson Boyd races over to cut it off, and it's a leadoff single for South Carolina. Walker is one for three. They have the lead man on for the fourth time in six innings. It's become now the case when you hear that music, you know what it is now. It's the FIFA World Cup continuing the round of 16 on ESPN and ABC Saturday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Uruguay faces South Korea then on ABC at 2. Landon Donovan of the United States take on Ghana. The World Cup is available on TV, online, and on your phone. Oh. This is the knockout stage now. Ghana, the only African nation to reach the knockout stage. Winner goes on to the quarterfinal. So there's no ties, right? No ties. No ties. Play this one out. Two 15 minute overtimes and then a shootout. Looking, we don't want a shootout, but we'd take a shootout if we had to. If but we mean the United States. Yes. Just we I mean, soccer come fans on. in general. Come on. It's USA. Yes, it is. Chop down the first. And they make the play second. They do not have a chance to double up Brady Thomas. He's safe on the fielder's choice. Nice play by the freshman first baseman, Richie Schaefer. That can be a tough throw with the runner making his way from first to second. I don't know who you're rooting for, but I'm going to just go with we is the U.S. United States. The United Sometimes States. Sometimes in broadcasting, you know, we we try to stay away from the we's, but I'm I not doing we, soccer. We are all caught up. I'm in not the World doing Cup soccer. Team. You know, knows a lot about the World Cup. No, Mark Garcia. Part. He knows a lot. He might know too much. He knows a lot. He knows a lot. Runner goes and it's nubbed on the left side to Miller and he throws out, out Morales. Two outs, but Thomas now in scoring position in the sixth. An elimination game tonight for South Carolina. They have one loss in bracket two, and the play within the brackets is double elimination format. The winners of each bracket move on to a best of three national championship series. TCU and UCLA will play the deciding game in bracket one tomorrow. The time of that is dependent upon whether or not we have another game in this bracket tomorrow. If these two teams have to play again, Clemson and South Carolina will again play the night game, and UCLA and TCU will play in the day. And it's interesting. We saw TCU on the verge of elimination the other day in an elimination game against Florida State. They were down by four runs late, got the memorable grand slam. South Carolina on the brink last night. There's an Olay at third base by John Hinson. They're going to send the runner. The throw's cut off. The relay thrown away by Miller. They had a great shot to get Brady Thomas. But there's that shaky defense of Clemson that we've talked a lot about. 
Henson waved at it, and then Miller cut the throw. And if he had a good rate later the plate, they might have had a chance at the runner, but his throw was nowhere near it. Enders winds up at second, and it's another run for South Carolina. They've credited him with an RBI on a single to left. And, and this it's is, five to one. This is a nice replay or a, a relay, but you know, the throw to home, he yanks it as he's setting up to throw it to home. It's almost like a pitcher that yanks a, a fork ball. And that's really been their Achilles heel lately is that defense. One strike to count on Bobby Haney. And this is again what Coach Tanner talks about with their offense. They have to scratch and claw. They haven't had a multiple run inning yet. They built a five to one lead. They have a very good bullpen and a very deep bullpen. So even if Clemson can get Roth out of it, it's not going to be easy for them to come back. No, I mean they really rely on that pitching and defense. And you know what you're getting out of Michael Roth. I mean that's incredible. You know to be able to do that and then now you come into a game you have a big emotional game last night and then you come in here and this is just consistent every inning they're just threatening and they just chip away and chip away. You're not really going for the. The knockout punch like we saw at TCU the other night. Against Florida State this is just a, a group that stays consistent and puts the ball in play. And ordinarily you might worry about a team how would they bounce back. After such an emotional win last night, but when you're playing your arch rival and you're two wins away from a chance to play for the national championship, that'll get you refocused very quickly. Oh, absolutely. You know, you, you go against a tough game last night, but you know, you're also talking about a group that had a seance in the, in the Super Regionals. When they were behind Bucknell five to one, first game of the regionals in Columbia at a rain delay. Coaches wound up walking in the locker room, saw their players arm in arm, lights off. A couple of lighters in the middle of the room providing just a little bit of light. They had that Avatar Spirit Stick, as they've called it, in the middle of the seance. And here they are in the College World Series. Oh. Out on the bounding ball to Freeman at second. But another run for South Carolina. They're inching closer to forcing a deciding game in this. Well, it becomes very tough. And, you know, those are the things that you get here. And people think it's it's pretty easy just because you're here to win it. You might be a, a top seed. But you, you've seen, you know, these top seeds come in here and, you know, it always doesn't go as planned. And Jack Leggett's seen enough of his left handed hitters against Roth, so he sends up a right handed pinch hitter, John Nestor. Roth's allowed just one oh. hit and one run through five innings, the longest outing of his career. The beach ball free on the field and left. Nestor batting for Chris Epps, the DH, we mentioned earlier, he's had a lot of uncomfortable looking swings recently against left handed pitchers. Nestor's a junior from Greer, South Carolina, just drafted by the Oakland Athletics in the 39th round. And he's seen plenty of action this year, started 41 games. This is their 69th game of the year. Had 140 at bats. A couple of homers and 24 runs batted in for Nestor. We've talked about the ACC's frustration here, but there have only been two different SEC schools that ever won the baseball national title. The SEC has seven titles, but six of them belong to LSU. Georgia has the other. So if South Carolina could go on and win it all here, they'd be just the third SEC team to finish the year with a dog pile at Rosenblatt Stadium. I think both coaches have been dreaming of that dog pile. Oh. Jack Leggett's been dreaming about the entire thing. He said, I can visualize. Everything the dog pile. I can visualize being, being at the press conference with my entire team in there with me. He's accomplished just about everything you can in baseball coaching without winning it. These are two highly successful head coaches. But life changes when you coach at this level when you win a national championship. I remember being down in New Orleans when 
Syracuse won the first national championship with Jim Beheim, who had a great resume with everything but the national championship. And I remember him saying, now they can never say, I never won the national championship. It's a great lift. Merrifield to catch the pinch hitter Nestor. Or uh, retired. Florida State's been here most often without winning at all. It's the 12th time for Clemson. So it's really only 11 appearances without winning the title yeah. because they still have a chance to win it in their 12th. Well, I, I, the great thing when you talk to these coaches is the text messages that they get from former players and, and just the effect that they've had on players that have been here and that are pulling for them. Oh. You know, Jack Leggett's getting texts and calls from, you know, even people went back when he was coaching in Vermont. Kirk McCaskill was, you know, sending him a text, and he's a coach he had in the early 80s when he was 26 years old as a head coach at Vermont. You know, those are the kind of people that people that he's pulling for. And High chopper down the first off the bat of Mike Freeman. Again, a solid South Carolina defense. Walker to Roth two down to keep up with all the NCAA College World Series information. Log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. And Jack Leggett told us Kirk McCaskill, of course, pitched for the Angels. He's a terrific hockey player at the University of Vermont. Kirk's in town with one of his children. A lot of youth baseball tournaments going on in the Omaha area in conjunction with the College World Series. Yeah, and it's a great atmosphere. I mean, all these kids come in and they get to come to some games and and see some oh. college action. But it's, you know, it's just a big time of the year for Omaha. And it's not just here at Rosenblatt. It's all over the place. That there, there, there's baseball being played everywhere from kids all over the nation. Clemson, a team that relies on their hitting. They have just one hit tonight. Rock tied up shelf. That should be caught. It is. And the masterpiece continues for Michael Roth. Retired five in a row. He's through six innings, having allowed just one run on the Gamecocks lead. Well, it's always fun to play them during the season, but to play them in Omaha would be amazing. It's the best rivalry in college baseball. I guess as close to the football rivalry as you get. It's nasty, you know. There's a lot of hatred between the two schools. It's going to be great for the state of South Carolina. It's going to be playing here in the College World Series. It's going to be. It's going to be crazy. If you lost every game in the season and end up beating South Carolina at the end of the year, the season's still a success. Well, Jack Leggett and Ray Tanner echoed that when we spoke to them this morning. They said a lot of the fans say to them, hey, I don't care how you do the rest of the year, just make sure you beat South Carolina. Just make sure you beat Clemson if you're Ray Tanner. Well, that sounds easy until you drop a three for... 60 on somebody and they just say well you're okay you, you, you happen to beat South Carolina it doesn't quite work yeah. that way I don't think fans say that mean it I mean it's perhaps more important to them that they beat their arch rival but they want to see wins most of the other games too new pitcher now is Thomas Cruz senior from Amarillo oh. Texas third pitcher of the night Following Dominic Leone and David Hazelden, this is the first appearance at the College World Series for Cruz. Oh. Well, he throws about 85 to 88, but really what his best pitch is is his changeup, and he's going to throw that in any count. And I think tonight he's going to stick with that no matter what the count is, really trying to get these guys off balance for South Carolina. Through and by Scott Wingo upstairs, the son of the former Clemson football and baseball star Billy Wingo. 0 for 2 tonight. He lined out last time up. South Carolina with their loss in the opener really put themselves into an elimination situation and they are notoriously slow starters here in Omaha last seven times they've been to the College World Series they lost their opening game. Come on, come on. Here you go. Here you go. 
Every time they've been here, though, under Ray Tanner, they've come back and won the second game. He made a joke the other day. I guess I'm not a very good first game coach. But they have not gone 0 and 2 in barbecue under Coach Tanner. I don't think he's just not going to show up for the first game. That one might not work. No, he's going to hang in there. One of these years when they come here, they'll win the first game. There's that good changeup you were talking about. Cruz begins with a strikeout. One out here in the seventh. South Carolina leading five to one. It's time to look at the Coke Zero game track. South Carolina single run in every inning except the fifth. Jackie Bradley Jr. Two more runs batted in. The story of the night. Michael Roth. His first start of the year. Standout in their bullpen. Coach Tanner said I'd be happy with three innings. We don't want a quality start. We're not looking for that. He got the quality start anyway. Well, I, I'm still amazed they don't have anybody up in that bullpen. I mean, you, you look at what he's got eight and a third. One hit and a one earned run. I mean, that, that's that's more than enough. Well, it's quite possible that they do not have their closer Matt Price available tonight. He pitched three innings last night and was dominant against Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, we talked last night about Tanner's decision to take Price out of the game. And as soon as he came out, his replacement, Ethan Carter, gave up the home run to Tyler Ogle in the top of the 12th that gave Oklahoma the lead. And Tanner admitted this morning he was pondering whether or not to take out Price, but at some point you just don't want to push the young man too far. Carter's given them some good innings this year, but Ray said this morning that he couldn't see any circumstance that they use Price tonight, but they do have a deep bullpen otherwise. Marzilli called out on strikes, back to back K's for Cruz. Those are the first strikeouts recorded by a Clemson pitcher tonight. Leon didn't have any, nor did Hazelden. In his three and a third innings of relief, he gave up two runs. I love the fact that Ray Tanner was open about th that Michael Ross only going to go two or three innings, and that's it. And then it's Johnny Holstaff of, of trying to patch it together and and get through the rest of the game. But you know, once you start seeing a kid pitch the way he's pitching, I'm sure he's over there, you know, smirking. If the offense is doing what they're normally doing, they're going to chip away and get you some runs. But I mean. Between Ray Tanner and Mark Calvey, they got to be pretty happy with what Michael Ross doing and, and just eating up innings. And I'm, I'm sure they're again just looking down the bullpen thing. We don't have to go there yet. Just let them keep going. Let them finish this game, and if they win, just bring him back out tomorrow and <laughs> pick up where he left off. Doesn't look like he's ever going to give up a run. How about that inning for Cruz? He struck out the side. Roth will head back to the mound. There isn't any action in the Gamecock bullpen. Seventh inning stretch, five to one, Carolina. South Carolina hoping to hang around this town. Our action brought to you by Capital One. From beautiful Omaha, Nebraska, an elimination game for South Carolina. That's not the case for Clemson as they play in this bracket format. Double elimination. Clemson doesn't have a loss yet. South Carolina has one. They lost their opener to Oklahoma to go right into the elimination side. They bounce back with wins over Arizona State to eliminate the Sun Devils. Oklahoma in dramatic fashion last night to send the Sooners home. Now they're trying to force a winner take all deciding game in this bracket tomorrow against Clemson again if they can hang on to this lead. Roth has thrown 72 pitches in the longest outing of his career sophomore. Only two career starts prior to tonight. They were both last year. Kyle Parker's been on base twice. Clemson has just one hit. Richie Schaefer doubled leading off the third. He scored their run. That's hit right at the second baseman Wingo.
One out. We remind you, friends, that coverage of Major League Baseball continues on Sunday and Monday night on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. 8 Eastern time, the Yankees head west to take on Joe Torrey's Dodgers, part of the ALNL showdown presented by State Farm. Joe faces the Yankees for the first time as Dodgers skipper. And then on ESPN 2's Monday Night Baseball, Steven Strasburg in the Nationals against Jason Hayward in the Braves, two of the best rookies to come into Major League Baseball in a long time. Roth has the comebacker from Miller. Two outs. He's retired seven in a row, showing no signs of fatigue. And how about Strasburg? You know, so much hype, and if it's possible to have surpassed it, he is. Well, <laughs> but you mean they noticed when he got called up? Yeah, the fans turned out. Okay. Gave him a pretty good outing in the debut, and he's just kept it going. Yeah, no, I mean, he's got electric stuff, and, you know, the thing is, is how long it'll, it'll last. I mean, obviously, he's, he's a talented pitcher, and, and he's proved he belongs in the big leagues, but, you know, again, it's one thing just to anoint him, and he's obviously going to have to earn it. Oh. John Henson, the batter, he's been cooled off tonight by the lefty Roth. He mentioned in. Eight of their nine NCAA tournament games prior to tonight, Henson has had multiple hits. But he's 0 for 2 in this one. Hit a bullet and a beautiful play by Haney. And a stretch by Walker, and he did get his toe to the bag. Well, Ray Tanner says pitching and defense, the formula for South Carolina. And both have been on display tonight. A seven pitch inning for Roth. After seven, still five to one for the game pass. Earlier today, TCU facing elimination. They had one loss. UCLA didn't have any. Matt Perk, brilliant again for the Horn Frogs. And they live to fight another day. As they beat UCLA behind six and a third Perk today. 13 and a third innings. Two ball games here. He's given up just two earned runs. And they'll have a winner take all game to determine the victor in bracket one tomorrow, either at two or seven Eastern time, depending on. The outcome of this one right now is looking like they'll be playing in the afternoon. South Carolina oh. six outs away from forcing a deciding game in this bracket as well. Thomas Cruz threw a ball to Jackie Bradley Jr. Oh. It used to be at the College World Series would be a single game winner take all to determine the national champion. If you got through bracket play. They went to the new format of the championship series best of three in 2003. And there have never been two elimination games involving the teams that started 2 0. We could have that tomorrow if UCLA, well, UCLA is going to play tomorrow. And if Clemson is forced to an oh. elimination game for themselves tomorrow, that'll be the first time it's ever happened that both 2 0 teams wound up facing elimination. Well, I like the fact that they've gone to the three game series at the end. It gets both teams a chance to, you know, not only. Oh be in a situation where they could have depth in their pitching and, and just see what's left but you know one game shootout you never know what, what you got left and, and that's part of the reason why I enjoy that three game series. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the two out of three gives you a better opportunity to demonstrate that you're the better team. Right. TCU and UCLA Clemson and South Carolina the only four teams remaining. Means we're guaranteed of having a first time national champion in baseball because none of those four schools have ever won at all. Christian Walker. Freshman having a very good College World Series. One for three tonight with a single. He was on the SEC All Freshman team. He's been a big part of their postseason run. He hit the game winning three run homer in their. 10 to 9 super regional win at Coastal Carolina, which is one of the best teams in the country this year. That came with two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning and propelled them on to Omaha. 
No action right now in Ray Tanner's bullpen. The runner goes from first and it's slam foul. And it's interesting. You know, these college coaches have to be careful. There's always a lot of scrutiny about do they run pitchers into the ground? Do they risk the future of these pitchers by taxing them beyond what they should? We saw the great regard that Ray Tanner had for Matt Price last night when he took him out after three innings when he was dominant. But isn't he in the same situation here with Roth? He's never pitched this much. He's pitched in almost every game of the NCAA tournament. Does he have to at least be thinking about it? I think he is. It, it, you know, again, you're going by what your pitcher's telling you. And there's some guys you can believe. There's some guys that you, you would probably question that. And, and, you know, he's feeling that same pressure of trying to decide what's the right amount to, to keep running him out there. But then he comes in that like that last inning and it's it's a quick inning and you almost feel like well you can probably get one more out of it. I think if he had an inning where he threw about 30 pitches he'd probably take him out. Four six three double play behind Thomas Cruz. So he's faced the minimum five batters in his inning and two thirds of relief. Trying to keep Clemson within a reasonable striking distance. They are an explosive offensive team. Clemson scored at least six runs in 14 of their last 16 games and eight runs in 12 of those 16. Brady Thomas pulled one foul. He's had another big night. Two for three, double, single. He scored twice. Pitch sent back to the screen. And the catch made by the ball girl. Crowd goes wild. Thomas, last night's final hero, he drove in the winning run after Jackie Bradley drove in the tie oh. run with two outs and a three and two count. Fans have the wave going now. It was going very slowly on this hot night, and now they're going with great vigor. Well, we first had the slow motion wave. Now it's the extra fast wave. And Thomas, it's a sharply foul down to the game clock bullpen. As you see, nobody is warming up. You know, Roth wants to go back out there. Yeah, I, I would think that he's going back out there. You'd see him all iced up if, if he wasn't going back out. 2-2 pitch hit right at the second baseman Freeman, a very steady defensive player. Well, the bullpen's done a nice job tonight for Clemson. It has kept the Tigers in the game, but will they be able to solve Roth before it's too late? The NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One Venture Card, official credit card of the NCAA Men's College World Series, and in part by Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste and zero calories. And the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Well, 24 hours ago, it looked like the Gamecock fans were heading back to Columbia, South Carolina. On the verge of losing to Oklahoma and being eliminated, they rallied to win one of the most dramatic games ever played here in the College World Series. Now they're handling Clemson with relative ease. Tonight they're going to the hat pile in the Clemson dugout. That worked on the other side for South Carolina last night against was, Oklahoma. I was going to say, maybe that comes from South Carolina. We saw that last night. It seemed to work. Michael Roth had a six pitch first inning, set the tone for the night. Hasn't thrown more than 16 pitches in an inning. That was the third when he gave up Clemson's only run. He had an easy seven pitch one two three seven. He throws a ball wide to Richie Schaefer who has the only hit of the night for the Tigers. He doubled leading off the third. Not surprising that that one hit comes from a right handed hitter because Roth is so tough on the lefty. Wilson Boyd on deck and Spencer Keyboom. Bottom third of the order. You have to have a strong neck to do that. Chop down the line. Morales on the run. Nice play. 
Well, not expected to go more than two or three innings. Michael Roth comes in, and he's just been very tough on the left-handed hitters. He drops down and gets ground outs and then gets the ball down, working it in on their hands and then coming back with sliders going away. But really effective against the left-handed hitters. You see him drop down. Those left-handed hitters are pulling out of there, and he's just running that ball away. And they're not able to do anything with it. They can't even get it out of the infield. Left-handed batters are 0 for 16 against them tonight. Well, I find it amazing that he's he can just he can do both. You know, he drops down against those lefties, comes right back with all the righties, and comes over the top with a great changeup, and he's able to have both of those motions. You know, in a situation where he's only going to go two or three, and now he's, you know, he's in the eighth. Well, Clemson has only hit three balls out of the infield tonight, and they've all come from right-handed hitters. Schaefer had the double to right and scored the run. Keyboom fly to right in the fifth. Nestor, the pinch hitter, fly to right in the sixth. We're told that's Kevin Brady, pitcher in the dugout with all those hats on his head. Whoa! Wingo. Got rid of that very quickly, but one hop to throw. They're gathering around the pile of caps. Boyd is safe. Rare mistake in the field, and they charge Wingo with an error. It looked like he had time to set himself and make a better throw than that. One hop in first baseman who couldn't come up with it. The 2010 FIFA World Cup continues. Round of 16 action. The knockout stage begins on ESPN and ABC Saturday, 9.30 Eastern Time. Uruguay faces South Korea. And on ABC at 2, Landon Donovan. And the United States takes on Ghana. Love the music. I don't want to brag on our people, but there have been years of preparation at ESPN that went into the World Cup. It's a huge production and very proud of our colleagues who are spending many long Thanks. days and nights over there to put on that event. I think the coverage has been sensational. It has been. I, I enjoy watching it. Some of them are, are a little early on the West Coast, but uh, you know, most of them, they, they've been fun to watch. Boyd at first, one out. Seemed to have a little bit better chance with a right-handed hitter up there. At least Keyboom got one to the outfield. He's 0 for 2. And a lot of these pitches Roth has been throwing are in the low and mid-70s on the radar gun. In the hole, a hit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they need anything admitting any more heat than we already have here tonight, but the heat index over 100 when the ball game began. It's still a hot and sticky night here in the big O. Two men on. That gets the tying run in the on-deck circle. And it means that Ray Tanner has to be thinking more seriously about either Tyler Webb or John Taylor in his bullpen. I was thinking if he's going to do it, he would do it right now with the right-handed hitter up. But again, you know, Roth has been pitching well to, to both sides, really. I mean, he's only given up the two hits. John Nestor takes a backdoor strike. Didn't like the call. Another tantalizing 71-mile-per-hour pitch. I just think back to this morning in our conversation with Ray Tanner. We'd be happy with three innings. We certainly don't expect anything near a quality start. He has gotten way more than he expected. The out of third and safe at first. Morales stepped on the bag to force Boyd. Nestor beat it at first. Safe on a fielder's choice. He's now 0 for 2. Two men on and two outs, and another left-handed hitter coming up for Clemson. Well, that's just a, a play where you're making sure that you get one out, a, a chopper that you're going to keep in front of you. Morales does a nice job just keeping in front. Get the one out. If you get two, that would be great. But just make sure you get that one doesn't get by you. So here's Freeman, who's had a very quiet 
College World Series 0 for 3 tonight. Oh. Michael Roth might feel like Isner from the uh, Wimbledon game. Probably has the same thing where he's just exhausted, kind of lumbering around. Just but making it through at the same time. Yeah. Because he's doing something very special. Oh. Freeman takes the ball low. 91 pitches now. In his first start of the year. And again, not only has he not started all year long, but it's a very warm and humid night here. Strike. Well, he also might want to just throw away his first baseman's glove. I don't know. I don't know if that one's going to be used anymore. Well, he's a part time first baseman. Swing and a miss by Freeman. Freeman is a transfer from the University of Georgia. After he transferred, he had to watch his former Bulldog teammates play here at the College World Series. Transferred to Clemson, believing it would give him a better opportunity to play, and it did. And now he's here with the Tigers. 2 2 pitch, hit in the air down the left field line. Marzilli makes the catch in fair territory. Roth is through the eighth inning, still working on a masterpiece. A two hitter. And welcome back to the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One. Sean McDonough, Robin Ventura, Aaron Andrews, delighted to have you with us. The South Carolina Gamecocks facing elimination for the third straight game. Already staved off elimination with wins against Arizona State and Oklahoma. Now trying to force a deciding game in bracket two tomorrow that they can hand Clemson its first loss of this College World Series. And they're three outs away from doing that. Jackie Bradley and the Gamecocks lead five to one. And a masterful pitching performance by Michael Roth. One pitch and one out. Little number off the bat of Adrian Morales. He's one for four with an RBI single. It's a new catcher for Clemson, Phil Pohl. We've seen plenty of time this year. We mentioned Keyboom wasn't the starter really until the postseason. Pohl 17 starts this year. Oh. Thomas Cruz has been excellent. Two and a third innings of hitless relief. Allowed just one walk, but he's faced the minimum seven batters to this point. And there is no action oh. in the South Carolina <laughs> bullpen. <laughs> so it looks like Roth, who hadn't started a game all year, made two starts last year as a freshman, both of them early in the season in April. Well, the other thing, he's not even sitting down. I mean, he's, he's, he's been standing up in the dugout every time he goes in, in between innings. He just stands up. Blenders skies one to straightaway center for Wilson Boyd. Two outs. Roth's career long outing was four in the third innings and that was in his second career start his last start prior to tonight. April 14th of last year against the College of Charleston. And he wasn't very good that night. Allowed six runs, five earned on nine hits and four in the third innings of work. It was off to the bullpen for him. Oh. Where he has become a very effective member of this team. With the pitching staff all chewed up, they were going to try to patch it together tonight, just starting with Roth. They figured they'd get off to a good start because he's oh. been excellent lately, and they felt Clemson was vulnerable to lefties with so many good left handed hitters in their lineup. But this is. Way beyond Ray Tanner's wildest dreams. I think it Mark Calvi too. I'm sure they're over there talking to each other. Like, are you are you kidding me? Oh. Yeah. Roth's one of those kind of loose guys. He had something to do with the seance and I'm sure the spirit stick. Yeah, he's one of those guys who kind of keeps it loose on the team, and <laughs> you can see he's laughing and joking. Certainly doesn't seem stressed out by. The fact that his team is facing elimination tonight. Haney walks. Two, two. 
Clemson will get its meat of the batting order up in the ninth inning. The three, four, and five hitters are due. Schaus, Parker, and Miller, but they haven't had a ball out of the infield tonight. That's out of the infield and pretty well struck to right. The playable for Kyle Parker. To give the Clemson bullpen credit. They did a nice job tonight to keep the Tigers in it, but they're down to their final three outs in this one. Three, four, and five hitters coming up, down by four. And in the field, a two-hit shutout being spun by Michael Roth. They're three outs away now from staving off elimination for the third time and forcing another matchup with Clemson tomorrow with the winner of that one moving on to the national championship final series best of three against the winner of bracket one either UCLA and TCU they'll decide bracket one tomorrow by far the longest outing of his career the previous long four and a third last season in his last start his long outing this year three and a third against Bucknell in the regionals. This Jeff Schaus the hitter 0 for 3 tonight. This is really going to dampen his uh, appearances innings per appearance. Popped up one out. Yeah you're right because they talk about how he's a situational lefty. And entering tonight I mean here's how short his outings typically are. Entering tonight Roth had appeared in 35 games this year and pitched 26 and a third innings total. So he'd been averaging well under an inning per outing that he might go the full nine tonight. Well they're gonna have to re they're gonna have to redo their speech when they talk about him. Because that really jumps up the, the innings per outing. Given the circumstances this is one of the most remarkable performances I can ever recall seeing here at the College World Series. I, I mean really all of us were expecting maybe two innings and, and I know that the coaches were talking about you know maybe two or three. But really you know he hasn't been in any trouble at all. The whole night. Kyle Parker the batter. He's quickly in an 0 and 2 hole. Well, right now he's working on a two hitter. There have only been 13 games in College World Series history in which the pitcher's given up fewer hits than the two he's given up right. There have been two no hitters at the College World Series, and there hasn't been one since 1960 when Thank Jim you. Wixon of Oklahoma State no hit North Carolina, Jim Erler of Texas no hit Tufts back in 1950. It's been a long time and there have been 11 one hitters. He's working on a two hitter and he's one out away from a complete game. Which would be just the fifth of the year for South Carolina. Well, again he comes over the top with those righties and this one he just turns over. Nice little slider coming on the outer half. And, and not overpowering and that's the thing that's been the most impressive is just really his control keeping Clemson off balance. You know nothing fancy just not easy to hit. <laughs> Trying to finish it against Brad Miller. Who's 0 for 3 with a strikeout and two ground outs. Only two hits for Clemson. Roth has walked only one. There's the third hit now. And the first by a left handed hitter tonight as Miller takes one through the hole on the right side and Clemson clings to life in this one. Well that's really the first positive swing you've seen from Clemson tonight from the left side of the plate. I mean the rest of the night he's just been eating them up inside. It was walked only one and that's against the team that's generally a very patient hitting club Clemson third in the nation in walks. They average five and a half walks per game. Only Florida State New Mexico State drawn more walks than these Clemson hitters. Roth has issued only one free pass that was to Parker way back in the second. He's hit two batters struck out three he's made him put it in play. Almost all of it on the ground in the infield. 
And he's managed to cool off the hottest hitter on the planet, John Henson. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Came in hitting 514 in nine NCAA tournament games this year. Runner takes off. It'll be defensive indifference. They paid no attention to Miller. He's in scoring position. And now Roth is one strike away from a complete game victory. In one of the most important games in South Carolina baseball history. The one two pitch in the dirt. Ray Tanner indicated that Sam Dyson would likely be their starting pitcher tomorrow. He's a regular member of their starting rotation. Clemson has their ace Casey Harmon ready to come back tomorrow. 2-2 Two -two pitches struck him out. A fitting ending to a masterpiece spun by Michael Roth. Shockingly, he is our Capital One player of the game. His first career complete game. First time he's ever gone past four in the third innings. And this was his third appearance at the College World Series. They were hoping to get three innings out of him. He won a remarkable nine. Allowed just one run. And were it not for a pass ball, he would have had a shutout. Well, I thought we were going to vote on the player of the game. Did you want to rethink it? <laughs> Demand a recount. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Good job, Rock. Rock the winner. Dominic Leone, the starter for Clemson, is the loser. 5 1 the final score. And these two teams will go at it again tomorrow. The winner will win the bracket and go on to the national championship series, and the loser will head home. We'll come back with more from Omaha right after this. Thanks to the new Venture Card from Capital One, we get double miles with every purchase. So we earned a tropical vacation in half the time. We earn double miles every time we use our card. Double miles add up fast so we can bring the whole gang. Awesome! It's hard to beat double miles. Everyone knows two is better than one. Get double miles with the new Venture Card from Capital One, the official credit card of the NCAA. Go to CapitalOne.com. Hey, what's in your wallet? Wait up! It has a perpetual calendar with Leap Year. Well, there are over 680 moving parts, all handmade. Mm -hmm. It's damaged steel, the same kind they use in sword making. There are excuses for spending money on luxury. And then there are reasons. Test drive any five-star crash safety rated Acura at the Driven by Reason sales event. Take advantage of attractive offers on the 2010 Acura TL for well-qualified customers. People do some crazy things to stay healthy, like sleeping in hyperbaric chambers, doing that hot yoga till they pass out, or wrapping their bodies in cheese to heal wounds. <laughs> Me? Hmm. I like to keep it real simple by drinking vitamin water triple X. The vitamins and antioxidants help support a healthy body, so I don't have to do nothing too crazy, like extreme aromatherapy. What? See ya. I'm on the pursuit of happiness, and I know Everybody oh, talks about dude, your donuts. car. Oh, that's okay. Here, watch this. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Oh, hey, Whoa. Can I... that's my agent, Rich. Can I try? Yeah, go for it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there with a hot guy. What's oh, up? Oh, this could work. I... Who's also sensitive? He's a rescuer. But has a dark side. Yo. Hello. Hey, dark side. Get your feet off the car. Find out what else State Farm agents can do for you at whyagent.com.
Ray Tanner's team did get those early runs single runs in each of the first four innings that was more than enough for Michael Roth. He pitches a complete game in his first start of the season showing no signs of fatigue pitching in his third game of this College World Series. He's with Aaron Andrews. Sean thanks so much. Well I have to ask you your coaches told us today eh, he's probably only to go two three innings. What were you expecting before the game. Um, I didn't know honestly. Uh, I told Coach Shannon that I was I would throw until my arm fell off and uh, I was thinking maybe five or six and they kept asking me how it was and said I'm, I'm gonna keep going back out there so I uh, felt great. And after five and six innings started coming through I mean what are you thinking as you're like all right here's seven here's eight. <laughs> um, I just kept telling myself one more inning you know uh, you can't really jump ahead you can't really think all right let's throw it eight nine you know just I just kept telling myself one more inning every time I came back in the dugout one more inning and then you get the complete game. Tell me what it means to you. Your team gets to stay another day in Omaha and oh by the way you beat your biggest rival. <laughs> uh, well we get more meal money. I know we're excited <laughs> about that. Um, but definitely you know it's a huge game for us uh, playing Clemson out here. You know we we played them a couple years ago 2002 and all that and. Um, you know, it's huge. It helps our bullpen out by me throwing uh, the whole game and uh, everybody's fresh tomorrow. You know, everybody's we're going to have a quick leash on whoever's out there and, uh, and we're going to have our whole team to throw at them. So it's great. Nice little inspiration on your cap as well. You've got the initials BT on there. Can you tell us a little bit about why you have that on your hat tonight? Yeah, um, uh, it stands for Baylor Teal. He, uh, he's a huge Gamecock fan and uh, he was, he was coming out to the field and stuff throughout the throughout the season. He was bottled. His body was just riddled with uh, just cancer, and uh, he's been fighting it and fighting it. And last night, uh, during our big win, he passed away. And uh, so that's you know, in the grand scheme of things, baseball, you know, it isn't everything in life. And uh, but you know, he's just been an inspiration for us all year. Thank you so much for sharing the story. Congratulations to you. Thank you. All right, Sean. Yeah, that young boy's been very much foremost in the thoughts and hearts of these South Carolina players and coaches. Roth brilliant throughout tonight. Went the distance, allowed just three hits and one run. Walked one, hit two batter, struck out only four, and threw 109 pitches, and they expected him to go about three innings. And he demonstrated you don't have to light up the radar gun either because a lot of those pitches were in the 70s. Yeah, I mean, that's the main thing that you saw tonight is you took throw good pitches and they don't have to be 100 miles an hour to get people out. You just got to locate. So for the first time since they went to this format in 2003, both teams that started 2 and 0 will be forced to play an elimination game. UCLA up against it against TCU. That game will be at 2 Eastern on ESPN2. We'll be back with you at 7 Eastern time tomorrow night for the rematch. South Carolina and Clemson, the winners of tomorrow's two games, move on to meet in the national championship best of three series. Final score tonight, South Carolina 5 and Clemson 1. Now for Robin Ventura and Aaron Andrews, I'm Sean McDonough reminding you to stay tuned tomorrow for two more great games from the College World Series. TCU and UCLA at 2 o'clock Eastern Time will get it started. We'll be back with you at 7 Eastern Time tomorrow night. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long from Omaha. We now join and re-air today's other game between UCLA and TCU, picking up the action in the...